Welcome to the Rebel Rebel Podcast. It's a podcast dedicated to creative rebels and entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Michael Dargy. This week is something new for us. We've got a video episode of this podcast. It's going to go up on a YouTube channel for Make More Creative. And uh, this is the first interview from our COVID series. And we reached out across the country to chat with Jazz Dakar in Toronto. Jazz has taken his realty game to a whole new level and built an incredible team. And he chats with me about creating success through what he calls his informal education and has some great tips for both rebels in waiting and those in the thick of it. Please subscribe to the Rebel Rebel and consider supporting this podcast through patreon.com slash rebel rebel pod or right on our website at the rebel rebel podcast.com. All right. Well, welcome to the Rebel Rebel. I am sitting here across the country uh, from Jazz and uh, Jazz. Thanks so much for being on the show. Thanks so much for having me, my friend. I really, really appreciate it. And if you could just at the very beginning of the show, it's always great. So people can sort of understand a little bit about you. Maybe just tell us who you are, what you're doing, and then we can sort of move on from there. Yeah. So the name is Jazz Takar. I'm uh, born and raised in Toronto, Canada. I run a team of uh, 25 realtors. So I'm in the real estate business here in the greater Toronto area. So for all your listeners and uh, viewers outside the province and outside the country, that's a a 75 kilometer radius uh, that my team covers. And that's 25 realtors, as I mentioned, under the Royal LePage banner, which is Canada's largest real estate franchise. And then I have a 10 support staff made up of uh, admin and uh, uh, six uh, media squad members where I produce uh, a weekly podcast and and approximately 20 to 25 pieces of content daily right across all different platforms that covers uh, uh, real estate content, entrepreneurship content like yourself, as well as uh, um, leadership content. Uh, I don't have a formal education. And so everything that I learned was really through personal education, seminars, books, audiobooks, um, and then of obviously of recent podcasts. And and so I thought if I could if I could start a podcast and I can start producing content at mass, speaking about what 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 I like and what I'm passionate about, i.e., real estate and entrepreneurship, I'm just going to sit down with guys and gals in those industries and, and allow everyone to be kind of a fly on the wall. And, and, and I'm proud to say now, after 15 years of being in the real estate business, my team is the number one team in Royal LePage Canada. Uh, we help a little over 700 buyers, sellers, and investors every year. Um, oh, I, like to, I, I like to laugh and say we're an overnight, uh, overnight success. It only took us 15 years to get to number one. So that's a little bit of a myself that's awesome well so let, let's uh let's sort of take that back for a second i mean you've got um let's unpack this part you said that you've got no education um well, formal I mean, education formal education or formal education and what do you think the the thing that you learned the most uh, or let me rephrase that um of the informal education or the informal education, what is it that mattered most to get you to where you're at today? Um, well, self awareness, finding out what 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 that. First of all, not having a formal education was okay. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm of East Indian descent, and so um, in in our community, if you're not either a doctor, lawyer, or engineer, right. you're generally not successful. Um, yeah. lucky enough, lucky enough. I have two older brothers. My eldest brother, um, is a, well, went to school to become a, a kinesiologist and then, and then went into personal training and he's no longer in that industry. My middle brother, uh, very similar to me, just like we liked school. We didn't like class though. If you know what I mean? Like, like yeah. we just didn't, like, I loved everything about the school, about going to school every day. I, I, I was pumped to go to school, but it was the social aspect of it. So when, when, once my, uh, my parents understood that about me, they never, they never pushed it on me. The outside community, maybe like, oh, okay, your, your two, your, your, your middle son and your youngest son are not that successful because they're not really good in their studies. Like I, I, I got to high school, finished high school and then, and then didn't, go past that. And with my formal, ed, uh, sorry, my, my personal education, I really learned that, Hey, that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. There's something that I like. There's, there is the skill that I know I've picked up along the way and that's connecting with people. So as early as 12 years old, I had, I had my first paper route 
learned quickly, hey, I can probably get another paper route if I get somebody to help me. I can, I, and they'll give me a cut because I kind of brokered the deal for them. <laughs> Did that for a couple of years. Um, went into went into uh, a co-op, like a, as a co-op student at a retail store. Fell in love with this, with, with, with the process of customers coming in me asking questions. It was in the footwear department, but it wasn't just like, Hey, can I get a, uh, a size nine and a half? It was like, I'm a marathon runner. And so what shoes do you advise? And we were trained on that. And so, um, from there I went into the banking industry, I went into car sales and then now I'm in real estate. So that, that skill and, and, and really going all in on, on that skill. So to, to, to kind of fully answer your question, it was, it was a being self-aware and being okay that I didn't have the formal education. Yeah. And then B, going all in on what, what I felt was my passion and my skill. That's awesome. And you said something that uh, I've never heard before, uh, which is great. Uh, so you said personal education. So yeah. I, I love this idea of the difference between formal education and personal education, because yeah. it really speaks to what you just said, your passion being, yeah. you know, I'm going to learn all I can about this thing. It's, yeah. it's not formal. It's not, you know, I'm not going to wear a gown and a cap at the end of this thing. Exactly. Like, like and, and I, I, and I have nothing against anybody who has a formal education. In fact, we need people to be, to go and get the, 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 the gown and the cap. That's why, especially in, you know, uh, where we are in the life, uh, what we're living right now with, with COVID, we have, we need doctors and, and they really are the real heroes. Yeah. We also need lawyers and we need engineers. We wouldn't have, you know, the, the bridges and everything else that we have and that we're blessed to have without guys and gals that actually took that step. That just was it me i needed to learn from people and and what i chose was seminars books and audiobooks yeah great so t tell me about so i mean the real estate is one thing right and that's rec canada and yeah so rec canada is my team name it's our brand it's the brand that we use it you'll see it right here it yeah. stands for real estate center Awesome. And so you, you know, you've, you've built this team, uh, you guys are crushing it, which is great. Um, what is the, what's the word I'm, the question I'm trying to ask, I guess, is, you know, you've got all this other media stuff. What made you realize that producing content uh, was an important part of this? Or is it adjunct? Is it like a, a separate thing? No, uh, great question. It's actually really the top of the funnel um, for, 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 for our business. So it allows us to, to have a platform. Um, we live in a day and age right now where we don't need to use or, or, or need uh, uh, the CNBCs or the NBCs and the ABCs or the CBCs, um, or the globals. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. Right. Uh, where, where we can now just as simply as you and I are doing, like I'm on my cell phone. I don't even own a computer. Um, and so I'm able to just literally do, uh, produce content at, at my pace and, and release and, and speak about what I want to speak about, just like you're doing. And yeah. so I figured that, Hey, look, the, the, it's also free. It doesn't cost anything unless you get into ads. And, and obviously there's cost with production and, 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 and the beautiful mic setup that I see that you have in your studio. <laughs> Um, there's obviously some costs involved in that sense, but I figured that instead of doing the traditional marketing that realtors do, i.e. Um, uh, uh, like bus shelters, right, um, right. Um, um, door knocking, cold calling, all, all skills that a realtor should have when he or she starts. And again, I do not knock anyone else's business model because that's, you got to start somewhere. Or if you're really good at it and you're passionate about knocking on doors and making phone calls at seven o'clock at night, like all go all in yeah. where I was, I felt like, you know what? I want to do something a little different, a little, a little off the cuff. Um, and I'm going to start producing content via visual. So video and audio being a podcast and also the written word. I can't write a lot. Like I can't write an email. It's not my skill. So I decided to hire a copywriter, give him my thoughts and he puts it into writing and, and, and adds a little bit of fluff to it. Um, and, and it's media, right? Like if you, if you think about, if you think about a, uh, uh, when countries go at war, the first thing that one of the countries will try to take over is, is the media. Because yeah. once you can control the media, you can, you can control the message that goes out. Sure. And yeah. so 
rewind, you know, five years from today, back in 2015, we were lucky enough to have a radio show um, on AM 640, which is one of Toronto's largest uh, uh, media outlets via radio. And, and we just had a lot of developers come to us. We picked up a lot of clients. Um, it got caught. It got really costly after a while. So we, for a year, we stopped doing it. And then, and then I heard about this cool word called a podcast. I Googled what it is. I had no idea what it was. Yeah. And we started a podcast and that's why so the media really the the all the content that we produce is kind of top of the funnel get to know us see if you even like us because you're i'm not going to be or my business partner and i are not the traditional realtors in terms of i don't wear suits um um, i like to maybe put on a blazer here and there but other than that i i i like to to wear branded t-shirts i'm comfortable i get to i get to just you know i i speak in ums and ahs i sometimes stutter and if you don't like this you're not going to probably, we're not going to do business together. And that's okay. I'm not here to do business with everyone. I'm here to do business with a select, a select amount of people and whoever I connect with, I'm okay with that. That's awesome. So talk to me about your, your podcast and I, it, not a shameless plug whatsoever, but uh, a, what is it uh, called? So people can yeah. find it. It's called REC experience. Awesome. And so I've checked out some of these episodes and I've seen some of your uh, YouTube stuff as well. Cause uh, you again, talking about you produce a lot of content, which is really cool. But, and it's not just, um, I don't want to, part of my show is I don't want to pump the tires of the business. That's not what it's about. It's about you, the person. Uh, but the fact that you had the foresight to create this channel and, you know, start speaking your truth in these messages, I find fascinating. Yeah, well, I really appreciate that. Thank you. And obviously you liked some of it, otherwise you wouldn't have uh, uh, wanted to do this with me. So I really, really appreciate um, how much that yeah, you, you did do a little digital deep dive on me. And so, uh, yeah, I talk about all things real estate, um, how, to, how to buy, how to sell, how to invest. In fact, that was the first 17 episodes I ran. I got a little bored of it. And I, I got to be honest, because it was like, how many times am I going to tell someone that you need a lawyer? You need yeah, right. a mortgage you should, you should inspect a home this way. Right. And, 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 and so I sat back with my team and I said, look, uh, I, I don't think I can do this for, you know, a hundred or a thousand episodes. It's just, it's just not who I am. And, and we started throwing some stuff on the whiteboard and we, we asked the question, hey, you know, what else are you passionate about? And, and that was posed to me. And I said, entrepreneurship. Like I love, I love when people are thinking about going to business. I love the ups and downs. I love personally going through the ups and downs. It, <laughs> like, it shows me that I'm alive because we all know <laughs> one time it goes flat. That's not a good thing. <laughs> yeah. And so I like those uh, uh, stories. And so I sit down with guys and gals that, that, that either have just started a business yeah. Um, or, or people who, who, who run an organization of 1100, um, 10, uh, I had somebody on that had about 4,000 or 4,200 employees, uh, half a billion dollars. It's worth to a billion dollars and everyone in between. Mm -hmm. And, and so, um, that's why the podcast really covers all things, real estate, entrepreneurship and leadership. Amazing. What's the craziest thing you've ever done? <sighs> I think the craziest thing is when I went from the banking industry, um, I was a sales and service specialist, really, really kind of like what, what I do for a living even till this day, but it was a salaried position. Yeah. And I took that salary position and I, I went into car sales. Um, the, the, the banking industry just, they weren't moving me up. I wasn't able to, to get up the corporate ladder because I didn't have the formal education. I didn't have the diploma or the degree. And I think at, at that time, um, 20 years old, I decided to, to get into car sales, which is, which is fully commission based. And a and ruthless made, business. And a ruthless bit. Yes, yes. And, 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 and anyone who's listening that does know me from some, from some, from, from, like in some one way or another, you'll know that that's not how I do business. I don't, I don't sell like that. In fact, I, I, I'm actually not a very good salesperson. I'm really, really good at making it easy for people to buy. And yeah. it's not really, I'm not trying to flip words or anything. It yeah. really is my process. I'm not that person to like, like buy now, buy seven, buy 14. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's not who I am. I can't speak like that. So you're bang on like the, the, the car sales business is very ruthless, but because I was able to bring my style to it, which was um, like, you don't need to buy a car today. 
you could go home and think about it. That actually yeah. worked really well because they just went to another dealership where the car the car salesman was like, no, 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 do it now, do it. You gotta sign now. You gotta yeah. sign now. My manager's gonna get like. And so I, I I think the craziest thing was me making that jump from a salary position to commissions. At that time, it seemed the craziest. It was it was the best thing that I ever did because uh, it made me. It, I had to go hunt for myself now. Right. So uh, let's let's take a, a sidebar away from business for a second. What's the craziest thing you've personally ever done? Like, have you have you gone skydiving? Are you like do you scuba dive with sharks? Do you no. like secretly want to drive a hot air balloon? Like, <laughs> I, I, I think I think in the car business, what I, I so no to those questions. Um, uh, uh, but in the car business, I did I did get to drive um, a Formula One car oh. that I, I was able to take around a track and doing and 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 doing even a hundred miles per hour in one of those cars is is a thrill that is mm-hmm. unbelievable. And no, so that's kidding. probably the craziest thing that I've done from a personal level. But I, I have thought about skydiving. I just haven't done it. My <laughs> wife is the probably one of the craziest people I know. If I told her to skydive, she would, she would say, let's go. Let's go sign up right now. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. She, 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 she is definitely, she has a thrill for, for that kind of stuff. Awesome. What's your, uh, I mean, <laughs> I want to talk about this because we can't go anywhere. Where's your favorite place to go in the world? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, I, I haven't been, um, but I would want to go to uh, uh, Bora Bora. I, yeah. I remember as a, as maybe a, maybe in my mid twenties, seeing the overwater bungalows. I haven't experienced that, and that's something that I definitely, definitely would want to do. Um, yeah. In all honesty, I, I go, I go for thirteen hours a day, six days a week. I got to be honest, I come home and the couch is my favorite place. <laughs> it truly is um, because I finally get to just kind of like, it, it really is putting out a lot of fires every single day. Um, yeah. And so when I get to come home and put my head down on a pillow, throw on some Netflix thing that my wife wants to watch, maybe we, we, we go back and forth and have a little discussion at the end of the night. And that's kind of my favorite spot. But the one spot that I have not been to that I definitely want to go to is Bora Bora. Sweet. And so six days a week, 12, 14 hours a day. I mean, that's pretty typical of anybody that owns their own business. Um, do you take vacations? Oh, uh, yes. And how important is that to your you know, mental health or, or is it, or does it hurt you to go away? Um, yeah, look, uh, yes, I do take vacations. I do probably about, um, I gonna say three mini ones and, and I'll explain what I mean by that. So my brothers and I have two older brothers, as I mentioned earlier, um, a group of us, uh, including my two older brothers and about another seven, eight guys, uh, cousins and, and, and just close guys that we grew up with. We do an annual trip, um, somewhere. Uh, it could be, you know, Havana, Cuba, it could be, uh, Panama, it could be Jamaica, wow. Dominican, Mexico. Um, so we've been doing that for, uh, Oh, close to a decade now. And wow. so we do that. We do, it's only, it's only four days. It's a mini. It's why I called it a mini vacation. Yeah. Then my, my, um, my brothers and I wives, so sister-in-laws, kids, cousins, kids, there's 21 to 22 of us that do an annual seven day yeah. again, resort. We have young kids. I have a six year old and a four year old. Yeah. My nephews and nieces range from like seven to like 16. So the nice thing is my, 14 to 16 year old nieces and nephews now have become kind of babysitters or that's always nice. Um, we'll do an annual, uh, a seven day, five to seven days. Um, and then, and then my wife and my two kids will try to get away to, uh, you know, we'll rent out a cottage or something in the right. summer, get away for a week. Uh, last year we did two weeks. Actually last year we also did uh, Barcelona and uh, Norway. I definitely, uh, uh, think that it's something that everyone should do. You need to sharpen the saw. Otherwise yeah. the saw is just not going to be able to cut the tree down. Um, me personally, um, I, I don't need much more than that because then I get into the, the mode of like, I, I get a little anxious being away. And yeah. so I don't, I don't, I, I don't want anybody to hear this, that they should be like this. But for yeah. me, my business, my, my the podcast, the media and the business is really my third child. Right. Um, and, and, and sometimes it's, it's hard to choose between the three. Um, <laughs> and especially the business doesn't talk back to you as much as my six year old, four year old do sometimes. But, um, I, I, I do have a hard time sometimes getting away. Um, because I, 
I'm really re- like living in my hobby. I got to be like, th- th- that's the easiest way I can tell you. It's, it, it, it's something I love to do. Um, yeah. I don't see the 16 hours. I don't even suggest that to anyone unless you really have found what you're passionate about. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's easy for me because it, it, it gives, it, it's what gives me my juice. It makes me creative. It, it's, you know, doing this with you right now is, is something I could do for hours and hours and hours because I, I truly want to bring value to as much people as I possibly can. That's yeah. my big macro goal is, is kind of leaving a legacy and, and, and having someone say, look, man, uh, uh, I never got a chance to meet Jazz, but I heard him on a podcast, and the energy that he brought was something that 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 they were attracted to, or they learned even one little nugget that they could take and move the needle in their life. That's awesome. When you go here, <clears throat> so I just got back from Maui. Yeah, the very first time in my uh, professional career that I have ever not worked on a vacation. Or do you work on vacation or do you just take it off? I, I generally take it off. Um, but not the first two days, first day, or I'm going to say like the first day is tough. Yeah. Um, Withdrawal. but then I'm just checking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, especially this last year in 2019, it was really, um, the ones that I have taken off, I, I am lucky enough now to have, you know, I spoke about the 25 realtors, but the 10 support staff that I have, um, a lot of them have really stepped up. Um, and, and taken a huge step in the right direction where I fully trust them. I give a long leash to all anyone who works around me. Like I just fully trust them, um, essentially from day one. And it's, it's more of them taking away trust with me. And, and, but there's out of the 10, there's three, four that, uh, uh, I can leave and know that they got it taken care of. And, and they'll only call me if it's something that is truly over their head. Um, and they're just not comfortable doing, but most of the time they'll come back to me and say, um, uh, like jazz, we don't even want to call you. We need, we want you to get the rest. And they're probably tired of me anyways, right? Like yeah, right. I'm the guy who's coming up with the ideas and delegating. Um, and so now they get on the, they get a little opportunity to get away from me as well. <laughs> it's a vacation from jazz. I 100%. <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, tell me about um, tell me about life in Toronto right now. Um, you know, when, when this airs, it'll be a couple of weeks down the road. But yeah. um, I, I want to know sort of what, what life is like in Toronto right now, uh, business climate wise. Um, and then, uh, you know, sort of personal family wise, like how you guys are managing uh, this or the new reality we were talking about earlier. Yeah. So right now in Toronto, um, business wise, we have a, a 150 to 170,000 people coming into this greater Toronto area. That's 75 kilometer radius. I spoke about year over year and it's actually stated slated, sorry, for the next 10 years. So, wow. And when you look at interprovincial uh, migration as well, so, uh, you're going to have approximately 2 million people in this greater Toronto area in the next 10 years. Now, that's amazing. We have, uh, you know, one of the, it's one of the most multicultural uh, cities in the world. Um, and our tech sector is blowing up right now. Um, it's created... Yeah, it's creating as as many jobs and outpacing actually, in fact, uh, Silicon Valley. The problem that we have, especially from a real estate perspective, is that we have a lot of people coming in, but but we can't build fast enough, and so it takes approximately. 10 years from, from when an application goes in to build a new building to when the shovel actually goes into the ground. Wow. We, all, we also have a green belt legislation, uh, a green belt, and it was a, a piece of legislation that came into effect about 15 years ago that doesn't allow developers uh, to build on certain parcels of land. And so it's really a real estate island here. We have a, because on the south side, we have the lake. On the northern part of the greater Toronto area, we have this, this, this piece of land that's restricted. You can't build on it, which actually makes sense because we need to preserve some land and we need trees and we need forests. And so supply and demand is really a big problem here. We have t- lots of demand, not enough supply. And that's why values have continuously gone up. Toronto is what, you know, what one of, if not the financial 
heartbeat, so to speak, of the country because the five major banks, six major banks head offices are here, the largest schools are here, the largest you know, uh, uh, hospitals are here. So we need more real estate to build, um, but we just it, we, we don't have the ability to do it fast enough. And this is by no means any type of political rant. It's not who I am, yeah. but it, it, it is. It, there's just a lot of red tape um, for, for for developers to build. And so, from a business perspective, um, it's been very very healthy. Um, it's a place that a lot of people want to come to to work because there's a lot of jobs. We don't manufacture anything really in Toronto. Uh, nothing of significant, uh, nothing of uh, significance, but it's really service-based. And so because of all the service industries being here, this is why there's so much job creation and so much em- employment. Our vacancy rate, like like for every, every, every place that goes up, it's, the vacancy rate is 1% right now. And yeah. so we actually have multiple offers on people that are looking for places for to rent. Now, when it comes to to to, to the climate in terms of COVID and 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 how um, we're, my my family and personally we're dealing with it, you know, we're making the best out of it. We we uh, uh, go for kind of a morning walk in the morning uh, with, with with the two kids, my wife and I, um, kind of clear our heads a little bit, try to talk about what's going on. And it's funny, right? For anybody who has kids, you know that if you ever want to get into a conversation that really doesn't have any significance in terms of like what's going on. It's kids. And I love it because yeah. my kids don't care about anything that's going on outside this world right now. It's all about them. So today, my four year old, it was all about why we, he can't chew gum. And <laughs> the conversation was for 30 minutes about why can't I eat gum? I see adults eat gum all the time. And, and, yeah. and the six year old's like, why do we got to brush our teeth like two times a day? Why is it two times a day? And, and those are the conversations we're having where um, it allows you not to, not to live in somewhat of uh, of the negative news that 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 is now become kind of daily, right? Um, yeah, sure. And 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 we're hearing a lot about it, but uh, uh, taking time to to do a lot of Zoom conferencing and video conferencing with people that I haven't had the opportunity to do it with for a lot, and like my parents, for example, I've, I've spoken to my parents more often than I did pre all this happening, right? Because now I'm checking up on them. I want to make sure they're good, right. and now we have a little bit more extra time. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Um, speaking of life, what's like one of the most defining moments in your life um, that sort of left a mark and sort of has made you who you are today? It's actually a very recent time. Um, about three years ago, my my mentor, my business partner. So there was three business partners, um, and 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 really like my third big, uh, older brother. Uh, him and I. Uh, he took me under his wing. Uh, 12, 13 years ago. And, uh, he passed away. He passed away, uh, at a very young age, uh, 54, yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, 54 years of age. Um, and, uh, uh, he passed away tragically. Um, and, uh, that, that really changed the course of my life because about three days before him passing away, he, he, he looked at me and we were, we were running an event. We had a, a probably about a hundred people at our office. We we're just we do kind of wine and cheese events and talking about uh, the current state of the real estate market. And uh, he looked at me and he was really the face of, yeah. of the brand and the company said, jazz, like it's been 13 years, dude, like you gotta be doing this. And I was like, I looked over at him and I said, Simon, right. Where are you going? Like, why do I need to do this part? I'm, let me do my role. I'm doing really well in my role. The, the machine is humming. It's, you know, yeah. we, we, we're doing the most business that we've ever done. Um, two days later, he passes away. And, wow. and, and, and then three weeks, within a three week span um, of him passing away, we lost some clients, some major, major clients. Um, and, and, and I was about to, I looked over, um, I was sitting in my office. Uh, I saw a banker's box just with files on it. And up, up at the top, I saw a, a picture of my of my two boys, and I said, yeah, "I don't even need this banker's box to take home. I literally just need to take this picture. I'm done. Like, I, I'm not doing this anymore. Like, three weeks I got when I was beat down already. Now I got kicked while I'm down like four or five times. What do I need this for? I'm going to do something else. I'll go get a job, and I'm done. And I, w- within that same breath, I, just, I said, "Really, that's not you." What this is, this is going to be your defining moment. This is your story. And it, all that personal education that we spoke about, it it almost felt like it all started to like get 
compartmentalized in my brain. Like, okay, now I'm going to take from this. It was that toolbox, right? I'm going to take this yeah. tool. I'm going to take this tool. I'm going to take this tool. And, and, and I'm proud to say, um, we went from uh, five support staff, uh, from 25 realtors. Um, now we're at 10 support staff. We went from number seven in the country to number one in the country. Um, we were probably helping about 450 to 500 people a year buy, sell and invest. Now we're over 700. Um, and I have to say by, that was by far the most defining moment. That's amazing. Takes big, big moments, right? Yeah. Um, I didn't, I didn't think, uh, I didn't think I needed it because I was already, yeah, I was, I was very passionate, right? Um, I, I was very self-motivated, um, a self-starter. Um, but I guess it, it, this was part like, now it's really becoming my calling because I probably wouldn't even been doing this with you. Like it would, yeah. I, it would probably have been Simon. You'd be speaking with Simon and I was perfect. I was okay with that. I had other things. I wanted to do other things anyways. And, and, and so now, um, it definitely was a defining moment, right? Because now, now it's me sitting here and having this conversation. with you. Yeah. That's awesome. Hey, I want to, while, while I'm thinking about it, I want to give a shout out to your, to your people in particular. I want to give a shout out to Luke, who's a, an amazing, uh, piece of your, a piece of your team, part of your team. Thank you for that. I mean, he's going to love it. Luke Leasing, 19 years old. Wow, um, really? it, it, so, so, so your listeners are going to love this story. He calls me up uh, three months ago. He says, Jazz, did some digital deep dive on you, like check your socials and all this. And, and um, I really think, um, like, I would love to meet with you. Yeah. I said, great. I go, are you a realtor? Are you licensed? He says, yeah, I'm licensed. Um, uh, uh, and I go, how long have you been licensed for? He goes, six months. I go, okay, how many deals have you done? He's like, haven't written a deal yet. I'm like, okay, that's okay. I go, but here's the thing. The value that I like to bring to people, I do not want to uh, uh, over promise and under deliver. Right now, I do think you should be with some, like, let me give you a couple of other names yeah. and you should sit with them because they're going to be able to give you, like, they're going to be able to hold your hand a little bit more. Yeah. And that's what you need. Yeah. And let's, let's talk in a, in, in a year or two. And he says, he, he, he doesn't hang up the phone. He says, no, I, you really need to meet with me. <laughs> and I pause and I'm like, this 19 year old kid, where does he get the bravado from to speak yeah. like that? And I was like, okay, kid, come on in and choose your, here, here's my, here's a link to my calendar. Pick whatever day you want. Yeah. Picks, that was a Friday. I still remember he picks the Monday morning, 9 a.m. slot that happened to be still open. He comes in and we've never looked back. He's just a, he, he's a sponge. He's, he, he, he always wants to learn. He wants to try new things. Yeah. Um, and he's willing. And he asked me a couple of days ago via, via text. Hey, Jazz, like, what do you think? Some like what, one of my biggest strengths are is I said, you're coachable, man. Like you're willing to learn. Yeah. And that's really hard to come by people who are 60, 70, they're still not coachable. Right. And guys, and, and, and sometimes not all millennials are like that. Uh, contrary to a lot of people's belief that oh, millennials are lazy. That's just not true. They just learn differently and yeah. they think a little differently and he he's coachable. And so I think that's very, I think that's one of the, 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 the most things that are like that, that I like to watch about him, that he's so coachable. That's great. Oh, that's, I'm, I'm pumped because uh, he certainly made an impression. And, awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Shout out to Luke. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. So, and, and I, there's so much in this podcast already, but um, this is the part of the show where I like to sort of reach into your brain and inspire others. And maybe it's a Luke, maybe it's uh, somebody else, but uh, I call them the rebels in waiting. These are the people who are, you know, maybe stuck in the cubicle or maybe they're doing salary and they want to start something different or they have a, a big, crazy idea. What advice would you give to them to help them accomplish that? Take the leap of faith. Take action. Start small. You don't need to, 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 to see the whole staircase. Um, just take that first step. It might be making a phone call to somebody in an industry that, that you're looking into doing. So for example, if you wanted to be a fashion designer, 
Um, and it just seems so hard and overwhelming and daunting. How about working for somebody um, on the side, a couple of hours a week, an hour a week on a Saturday, getting them coffee, calling the biggest fashion designer in your city and saying, hey, do you mind if I can just bring you coffee? I just want to learn. I want to be a fly on the, on the wall in conversations uh, that you're maybe having. And I just want to help and get coffee. So taking that first step and, 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 and just getting started. Nice. Uh, so not everybody who listens to the show are s- starting out. They're not all rebels and waiting. And this is brand new, this podcast only right now, Jazz. Who, what advice would you give rebels in the thick of it? Keep going. Understand that, um, that, that, that it's meant to be hard. If it was easy, everybody would do it. Yeah. And so if you're in the thick of it and you're having problems, especially in, in, in hard economic times, know that most millionaires and billionaires, if that's, if the money is what you're driven by and there's nothing wrong with that, and then understand that most, most of them came out of hard times, recessions and depressions. Yeah. And so, um, understand that if it's hard, it's meant to be hard because if it was just easy as going for a walk, then like every, most people, they can do that. And yeah. so if you're right in the thick of it, just understand this is just part of the process. Love the process. Enjoy the process. Because when you get the goal, when you hit it, we all know it only lasts so long. The novelty wears off. It's, you know, I, I look back and, and, and sometimes say like, because well, we're, we're talking on a podcast and we're talking about uh, podcasts in general. I, I'm at almost a hundred episodes. I, I, I want to go back to that second episode. Like I enjoyed it so much. Right. And so, um, um, if it was hard, it's meant to be hard. If it was easy, everybody would do it. That's awesome. Great advice. Thanks. Jazz. Um, okay. Just as rapid fire questions. Um, favorite, ep- or favorite, uh, series on Netflix. Favorite series on Netflix, like running on right now. That's on right no, now. In general, something that you that's your favorite. Um, I would say uh, first season of Narcos. I don't know what it was that actor. I can't remember his name. Um, yeah. Whoever played Pablo, I just I loved it. First season. First, <laughs> first season. season. All right. Uh, favorite movie you've ever seen, uh, or give me your top three. I won't make you choose a favorite. Um, Scarface, um, uh, uh, The Godfather, and Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> opposite ends of a spectrum yes yeah <laughs> dumb and dumber i can still watch um like if you just have it on and back I, sometimes i put it on as background noise right like i'll go I'll, I'll just start on my phone i'll start searching for things online but i love just hearing it on in the background oh that's awesome okay cool um apple or android Oh, Android all day. I've never owned a piece of Apple equipment. Sorry. For the Apple lovers. Whoa, and okay, aficionados. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, your, your favorite podcast. Um, I'm going to have to say it's the Gary V audio experience. Um, it's, 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 it's the first time. And the real reason is it because it's the first time I heard what a podcast was. I didn't even know what it was. He, one of his Instagram videos or yeah, it was his Instagram video. I clicked on it. I said, what is this podcast thing? And, and so ever since then, um, and, and, and then I had him on my podcast. He used, he used my episode to on, on his and, it just, it really was one of the, uh, it's one of the ones that I listen to on a regular basis. That's awesome. How cool is that? All right. Uh, yeah. what is the nickname you wish you had in high school? Um, the one that I had, it was, uh, uh, JT money. Um, <laughs> I don't know where it came from to be honest with you. JT, obviously jazz. Tackler, that's easy. Um, yeah. But I was always, I was always the kid that had money, right? I, I, I always found jobs, odd jobs to work at. I liked, I liked it. I liked the thought of, okay, I work and then I get money and then I can buy whatever I want yeah. and make use of it. And so at high school, you know, not a lot of people have uh, money, not like I had hundreds of thousands of dollars or anything by any, by, by any stretch of the means, but, but, but I always had um, some disposable income. <laughs> um your beverage of choice root beer all day long my favorite. yeah i uh a and w specifically uh yeah, that's right. the, that's my that's my go-to um i don't know if it had something to do with 
maybe knowing that my brothers weren't going to drink it. And if I asked <laughs> for it, it was the one that they weren't going to touch. Um, yeah. Even my cousins, I'm thinking about like everyone, you know, this regular Coke, Diet Coke or whatever it is, Sprite, ginger ale, um, but root beer all day long. Amazing. All right. Last question. Uh, your favorite uh, fictional character? Uh, the Incredible Hulk. I, uh, I I fell in love with uh, uh, that comic. I fell in love with the, him, just how strong he was. The fact that he turned into the Incredible Hulk, how it all kind of happens. Um, and and um, I'm not an angry person by any means, but I just like that he was the strongest person in the universe. Are you like Edward Norton fan or Mark Ruffalo? Mark Ruffalo. Mark Ruffalo. <laughs> I'm a Mark Ruffalo guy, but I even go back to the comics. I yeah. even go back to or um, Bruce Bett or um, Lou Ferrigno. I, yes, yeah, that's the one that, and, and it's funny because I was never allowed to stay up and late at night like that late. I used to come on here in Toronto at 12.30 on a Friday night, yeah. uh, 12.30 a.m., and um, I would go to bed and I would put on an alarm, like old school alarm, really quietly so my parents wouldn't know. And then I would run downstairs and watch it because there's no way I could stay up that late. Yeah. And I remember the A-team ran before oh. it at midnight. Yeah. So now anybody knows that they know that I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it was the A-team. And then I think it was MASH or something. I wasn't a, man, a fan of MASH. I think yeah. it was MASH, A-team, and then, and then Incredible Hulk. So I always remember watching the last two minutes of the A-team and yeah. then I got right into the, the loop. Ferrigno one was awesome. I can't remember the guy's name, but who no. played Bruce Banner. No, me neither, but I'll, I'll find it. I'll put it in the show notes. Cause awesome. I love that. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I <do a> <laughs> yeah. What is the one thing that you want people to know uh, right now? Um, that, that this too, like this too will pass anything that we're going through or anything you're going through in your life in general will pass. Um, and, and, and I, I speak from when my partner passed away, um, and going through that time for me, um, was one of the, 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 the few times where I felt really useless. Um, and I just, and, and, day by day. I took it day by day. I, 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 I woke up every morning. I didn't get a lot accomplished some days in that period of a couple of months, to be honest yeah. with you. Like, you know, it was taking care of just business stuff, fire stuff and, 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 and estate stuff. But in the mind, I really didn't, I, I was, I felt lost. Um, but I remember telling myself, okay, just day by day, just get up, get up, get outside, do something. You don't know what, get in the way of opportunity, right? Cause opportunity is everywhere. You just need to get in the way of it. Oh, and so that, 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 that happens if you understand that whatever it is that you're going through, it will pass. That's amazing. Thank you. Jazz Takar, thank you. That was, uh, that was so much fun. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, thanks for listening. We've got a ton of great new guests coming up over the next few weeks. Uh, we've been using Zoom for a lot of them to do f uh, physical distancing. So we're kind of figuring out our audio stuff like that. But uh, look forward to not just the audio, but we're going to have videos of these interviews as well. Check out the links in the show notes and consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Uh, there's not a lot up there. There's not a lot of subscribers. We really have done nothing with it. But now, because of COVID, we're going to do a bunch with it. Uh, anyway, so you can check out there for more content. If you like this podcast, please consider supporting it by visiting patreon.com slash rebel rebel pot. You can also get some neat perks there. Or if you just want to support the show because it's just how you roll, head on over to the rebel rebel podcast.com and you can buy a monthly subscription right through our PayPal link. You know, five bucks, 10 bucks, 20 bucks, whatever. Um, anyway, thanks so much for listening. Until next time.